Hey team, this is Nathan from RunDreamAchieve.com. Okay, so today's topic, I want to go over how many miles a week should you run? Okay, and I, and I think it's a very important question. A lot of athletes uh, ask this uh, and reach out to me in regards to put how much mileage should I be running? How many miles a week? How many kilometers a week should I be putting in? And my, my honest answer to, to this question is it really comes down to your work schedule. Uh, a lot of athletes out there are working full-time jobs. They don't necessarily have the luxury of being able to train full-time for a race. So, and I, and I also feel that you know, because I've had the opportunity once in my career to train full time and have no other worries or concerns. And I ran faster when I was working a full time job for the marathon than when I had the, the uh, opportunity to train 100 percent with an elite unit in the Army uh, as a member of the Army World Class Athlete Program. I actually ran my personal best of the marathon of two hours, 19 minutes and 30, 35 seconds while I was working as a staff member. Because I, you know, I failed to qualify for the 2008 Olympic trials uh, in the marathon, but I earned the 2008 USA Olympic trials a standard time of two hours, 20 minutes flat or faster, 28 days after the Olympic trials were held. And I was working a full-time job when I did it. I just didn't quit. You know, I failed to, my last possible chance to qualify for the 08 uh, USA Olympic trials marathon trials was uh, at the 2007 Chicago Marathon, which was held in October. And actually, the 2008 USA Olympic Trials Marathon uh, competition was actually held in November of 2007. So Chicago was my last uh, opportunity to get the, the standard. And in that year, in 2007, uh, Chicago uh, dealt with the worst conditions, heat conditions in the history of the race. They actually closed down uh, the Chicago Marathon, I think after like four hours or three hours. So it was really bad that year. And um, and so I went out in 111 the first half and ended up pretty much walking and jogging the rest of the way um, and ended up running 251, 55 I think was my finish time. So it was extremely difficult in the second half. Um, and I knew if, if the army hadn't have flown me out there and put me up in the hotel and you know paid for my food, I more than likely would have called it a day at the half marathon point in that race. Um, and so I ended up running that 219 in, in December of 2007. So, and what the reason why I'm saying that is because it's very important uh, whether you're training for a marathon or a 5k or a 10k be persistent and believe in what you're doing okay because if you are just kind of tiptoeing through the tulips and you're just kind of you know lukewarm about being a great athlete and, and measuring up to your capabilities you're not going to ever reach what you're truly capable of doing you have to be zeroed in white hot focus on what you want to do so how many miles a week should you be running? Uh, I've seen athletes that are that run phenomenal times uh, and performances off at 30 to 40 miles a week. I've seen other athletes that are running over 100 miles a week that don't run as fast as the athletes that are running 30 to 40 miles a week. So look at what you're doing in training. What percentage of your weekly training, your weekly volume, are you training at or below your goal race pace, whether that's 5k race pace or your half marathon race pace or marathon race pace, whatever goal time you want to go after, how often are you practicing that pace? Because if you're running too much of your volume each week too slow, it's going to make you a superior long, slow distance runner. And certainly there's nothing wrong with, with just running consistent mileage. I've seen, again, I've seen athletes that are just better suited for running consistent mileage and they go out and run great times just off of like I, like I said, consistent, persistent mileage. And, and they don't do that much speed work, but they do do very focused uh, mileage each week. And some of them run much less and get better results, and some run much more and don't get the, as good of results as the athletes that are running less. That's why I always preach here on RunDreamAchieve.com the importance of training smarter rather than harder. Leverage is something most of us whether you're an athlete or you are in another uh, career field, working hard is what we've all been taught. But how many work people that you know, how many people do you know that, that have worked extremely hard at something and still do not get the results they're looking for? You know, I, I, you know I'm real interested in entrepreneurship. I, you know, I'm studying, uh, went to business in, 
I studied entrepreneurship in business school at Purdue, uh, finished my MBA, working on a DBA now at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. And so what I'm studying on my dissertation is to focus on the entrepreneur, entrepreneur mindset. And I, I, I do see a, a, a correlation between high level athletes, very committed athletes and entrepreneurs. And they both have the same type of mindset, that grit, that determination and motivation to, to, you know, that they don't lose enthusiasm quickly. They're, they're very persistent and they get over setbacks very quickly. So if you want to be successful in this sport, whether you're training for, whether you're a sprinter, middle distance runner, or long distance runner, you have to have that grit and motivation and drive to continue to put in the work, but be smart about the work you're putting in so that again, you're going to get better results by working less rather than harder. Again, leverage simply means doing more with less. And, and so as I think about, um, athletes that are asking me this question of how many miles a week should you run or should I run? Um, I think about the importance of just reminding you, uh, look at your training, you know, are you running 30 miles a week, but you're running 90% of that mileage at, you know, a minute to a minute and a half slower than your goal race pace, then you have to start mixing up. You have to start adjusting what you're doing in training. The best middle to long distance runners are running around 40% of their weekly volume at or far below their goal race pace. So the best middle to long distance runners, they make it look easy for a reason. You know, they're not, it's not just, you know, physiological talent that they have. They have a mixture of talent, but they also are very smart and very driven and very motivated for success. They are very persistent and, and have that grit and determination that any successful middle to long distance runner or any any individual that's successful regardless of what career field they're in, they're good at what they do for a reason. They're very consistent. They they put in the the work and they are very focused on leverage very, very focused on being, uh, working smarter rather than harder. So don't get hyped up on how much mileage per week you're running it. You know, I've, I've known athletes over the years too, that that'll say, well, I ran, uh, eight to 10 weeks at a hundred miles a week. Well, great. You're running a lot of volume. Okay. Let me see your training and let me see the results that you've put up. You know, if you're, if you're running a hundred miles a week and you're say you're trying to break a three hour marathon and you keep running three fifties and three forties, What's I want to find out what it is that at, that particular athlete's doing in training. You know, if they're trying to break three hours, they need to hold 652 mile pace. So, it, what's causing that slowdown? You know, maybe they're running. Maybe they're able to hold the first 15 miles or 16 miles at sub three hour marathon pace, but they start falling apart in the second half. I would I would be focusing on asking that particular athlete what is their nutrition and 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 hydration practices in training as well as um, how much rest they're getting, how much fluid intake they're taking in, uh, how much time they're training mentally. You know, I, I think, um, if you want to be great in the sport, you have, you can't just do 50% of the work. 50% of the work is training physically for your workouts and for your races. You're putting in, you're being very consistent with your tempo runs, your long runs. Um, you, you may be doing everything right, but you can't just do physical training and neglect mental training and expect to be great at this, this sport. Um, so don't get, again, focus on being smarter about your preparation and you're going to get better results. You're going to start getting those personal bests that you've been aiming for. So don't get so, like I said, don't get so hyped up in how many miles a week you're running. You know, again, it's be, it's much better to work smarter and run less mileage, but more focused mileage than it is to running high volume and still missing your goals. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I, I really want the athletes that watch these videos uh, to to get the results they're seeking. You know, that's why I made RunDreamAchieve.com, you know, back in 2011. You know, I, 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 I've been mentored by some great athletes and great coaches myself. I've experienced setbacks myself. I know what determination and, and being persistent, you know, toward going after a goal is all about. And, and so I, I relate to all of you who watch these videos and that are seeking the answers to these questions. Um, again, if you're working a lot of, uh, if your work schedule is very difficult, then put in what you can put in, you know, whether that's 30, you know, 20 miles a week or 30 miles a week, or if you have a little bit more time, then focus on, you know, up in the, the volume. But again, even if you're running a hundred miles a week, 
again, go back and look at your training schedule and look at how much percentage of your weekly volume are you training at the goal pace that you're going after. You know, that's how I created the, the training plans on RunDreamAchieve.com uh, as well as the, the running courses. I focus on a specific time standard and what specific workouts that athlete needs to hit in order to reach that their their particular goal. You know, I had a, an athlete uh, this just this past weekend uh, run under his goal. He wanted to break an hour and 30 minutes for the marathon and he followed my 130 uh, sub 130 half marathon training plan and he ended up running 128.28 uh, for the half marathon. So uh, it was pretty awesome to hear that. And I've had other athletes as well that, that say, hey, I followed your plan, uh, went out and, and put in the work and got a personal best. Well, it wasn't me that was doing it. You know, they, they, they had to, they had the tough job. You know, it's very easy for me to form up a training plan or to make a video and to, you know, suggest some things you need to be thinking about and doing, but it's a whole different ball game when you have to go out there and you have to put in the work yourself, uh, whether there's no training plan or you, there's no training partners that you have with you. Um, and you're out there by yourself or you're with a bunch of training, you know, you're with a group that's pushing you to the limit. You have to put in that hard work. So, um, Think about leverage. Think about that all the time when you're training. You know, always think about how can I do more with less? And this is a, again, this is a, a mindset that is not taught in our school systems. It's most, you know, even our, in our, our associations, we're always taught how to work hard. You gotta work hard. Yeah, you do have to put in the work. I mean, you can't just run a great time sitting on a couch, you know, eating chips and watching television all day. You do have to put in the physical work and you do have to work hard, but also, be smart about what you're doing as well. So look at your training. You know, that's why I always harp on invest in yourself. Get a training plan, get a running course, you know, study what the athletes that have done what you want to do, study what they did, you know, not only just their physical training, but their mindset, and then duplicate their work habits. Mimic what they do. You know, be yourself, but also study success. Study what successful people do, successful athletes have done. And that will help speed up your learning curve and help you bypass just guessing of what workouts you need to be doing each day and each, you know, each month and each week. So I hope this video is helpful for you all. Definitely uh, give me a like if you can. It helps the, the, more, the YouTube algorithm and more athletes to see these videos. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I make a new video, you'll be notified of it. And if there's anything else I can help you out with, uh, definitely leave me a comment in the section in the comment section below. Uh, I always reach out to, to those that visit these, these videos and uh, always hypes me up and pumps me up to hear uh, about the new personal best that athletes are getting and, and, and even the trials and setbacks that they're dealing with as well. I always respond back. So if you leave a comment, I will respond back to you. So wish you guys and gals all the very best in your training and your racing, and I will talk to you all in the next video.